Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Councilwoman Felda Williams. This is a special edition of Williams and Wags. You're going to get to meet Baxter. <music> On a regular basis, we visit with the Arizona Humane Society to share with you all of their great work in the community. Recently, I had the opportunity to meet with Bretta Nelson and a few of her furry friends. Now it is time for our newest segment of Williams and Wags. We welcome the Arizona Humane Society to highlight adoptable pets and share with us important safety tips. Joining us from the Humane Society is Bretta Nelson. Welcome, Bretta. Hi, thanks for having us. And who's with you today? I have Baxter. Baxter is a two-year-old Pekingese Beagle mix. Uh, he's currently up for adoption at the Arizona Humane Society um, when our field rescue team rescued him out of an apartment. Oh my goodness. Yes. And um, he's two? Yep, two years old. Seems to have a lot of manners already. Uh, he was crated on our car ride here and did just wonderfully. Not a peep out of him, which is not often common with the beagle breed. So and no beagles. <laughs> we had one at our house. You're right. Yes. Not too <laughs> they like to be very vocal, which I hear he can be at times, but otherwise he has just been a perfect gentleman uh, and one of hundreds of pets that are available at the Arizona Humane Society. Is he full grown? Yes. He is full grown. I think he's about 15 pounds. So he's really just that perfect size for somebody looking to add to their home. They may not want to bring in a puppy who might require a little bit extra work. Uh, yet these small dogs tend to live very long lives. So at just two years old, he has so much love to give. He is so adorable. <laughs> he is pretty cute. So I know that we've worked together on a lot yes. of issues and legislation yes. trying to help uh, stop abuse. Absolutely. You want to tell us what's the latest? Yeah, well, first of all, you are one of our biggest supporters, so we can't thank you enough for all you have done for animals in our community. And it is a very long standing partnership with the city. And most recently, one of the biggest successes was the passing of House Bill 2671, um, which really strengthens those animal cruelty laws. So the bill passed um, in August. Uh, and what that bill does is it takes um, acts of animal abuse, very egregious crimes against animals um, and strengthens them from a class six felony to a class five. What that means is those people will start seeing mandatory jail time uh, as well as probation and treatment. And I think one of the biggest things in situations like this is these people need treatment and they need help because we all know the link between abuse on animals leading to abuse on children or mm -hmm. domestic violence. Uh, so yeah, that was a huge, that was something we worked uh, tirelessly on for the last four years to get passed, of course, with uh, so much support in the Humane Legislative Coalition of Arizona. Uh, so, you know, we have so many pets that um, are going to benefit with these strengthened laws. I'm glad you mentioned the coalition because yeah. this community uh, has a very strong mm -hmm. voice against animal abuse. Absolutely. And recognizes um, that's just a symptom of the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I am very proud of our police department. Absolutely. You know, they've been very involved. They work very closely with you. Yes. But I work with the other partners mm -hmm. throughout the community. An interesting one that I had not heard of, but I hear it's going to be pursued coming uh, the next session is, you know, we passed, Phoenix passed the ordinance against pet stores mm -hmm. and pet, puppy mill pup. Mm -hmm. and now they don't necessarily sell them. They're trying to trying to scoot around. Mm -hmm. They lease them by the month. Mm. You can lease a pet, and I I don't see how that's healthy for the pet right. or the community. And I could just see disasters happening along the way right. when the newness wears off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, um, it takes a village, and that's certainly what we have here in Arizona and in the city of Phoenix. And as you mentioned, we worked very, very closely with law enforcement. Um, just this past year, the Arizona Humane Society's field operations team went out on suspected 7,700 
cases of animal cruelty and abuse alongside um, our city of Phoenix Police Department. So clearly there is a need to all work together. Uh, the city also has the uh, anti-tethering ordinance, which has been extremely helpful in just adding another tool, um, not only for the police officers, but for our team as well, to really help educate people, hold them accountable, you know, and understand that animal abuse just will not be tolerated. I just think it's so important for our community. Absolutely. I, 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 I've lived here a long time and really have been involved in the last 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I am so proud to be part of this valley. Absolutely. The people working together and taking on issues that are not always the easiest to deal with. Absolutely, yes, I would agree with that. I mean, everybody has, has worked together and really these, you know, you're a pet owner. Uh, these guys are voiceless. They don't have anyone to speak on their behalf. Um, and that's really what the Arizona Humane Society strives to do. Uh, our president and CEO, Dr. Stephen Hansen, uh, came in, in in October of 2013 and just has really um, challenged our team to do even more for the pets in our care. So we've been able to now open and an ICU for Parvo, uh, which is something that oh, shelters that. across the country aren't able to treat. We also have a, uh, a bottle baby kitten uh, intensive care unit for newborn kittens and maternity suites for moms giving birth um, to their babies so they don't have to do it in the general uh, shelter population. So, uh, you know, Phoenix has just made great strides. The Arizona Humane Society's made great strides, but we can't do it without the community support. And with the passing of House Bill 2671, that was a community driven mm -hmm. um, initiative that passed. And about a month after it passed, we received our first class five booking. Uh, it was a pug named Miso, whose owner admitted to um, hanging him. <gasps> Uh, and just a very horrific case. So when he was rescued by our animal cruelty investigator, uh, he was brought into the Arizona Humane Society's trauma hospital. Uh, X-rays revealed he had fractured ribs, a fractured pelvis, a broken tooth, uh, and he's going to be one of those first cases that just really puts us on a new path. And of course, there have been hundreds before him that have really led to this legislation, but I think it's going to be a game changer uh, for our community. I'm so glad to hear that. It breaks my heart. Right, yes. When I, when I worked at the Sheriff's Office and the MASH program mm. um, with the abused animals, Yes. I saw such horrendous things. It was almost unbelievable to mm -hmm. me that you could do something like that yeah. to another being. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's horrendous. So I really double cringe when I hear about the hanging because I can remember pretty bad. Yeah, and, and those cases sit with you. And I think what people don't realize is kind of the physical scars of an animal. Um, they're noticeable. You can, you know, medically treat them, but it's the emotional. Uh, abuse and scars that some of these animals take away uh, that are harder to overcome. And we have a behavior team at the Arizona Humane Society. There are specialists that work one-on-one, -on -one, not just with dogs, but with cats mm -hmm. too. Uh, we see a lot of hoarding, large-scale intake cases with, with cats who just, you know, have always kind of lived in, in this mentality of, of having dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And, and same thing with hoarding cases with dogs where there's maybe oh. 60 living in a one bedroom apartment and they have a pack mentality and, and don't know to trust humans. So uh, for Miso's case to see that he was so, a typical pug, he was exuberant and wild and crazy. And we said to him, you know, Miso, you, you're injured. You have to try to stay still. And he, but he's so resilient and he held no ill will towards people. And I just, I think there's so much we can learn from the animals in our care. You know, what always amazed me and helped soothe off the, the really ugly things mm -hmm. that you see is the change in them. They can be yes. the most loving just overnight. Absolutely. Kind of, they respond to, to tender care mm -hmm. and to love. and they forgive you. They absolutely do forgive you. And I think for our behavior team, I mean, there's that moment where it just clicks 
and suddenly a pet that didn't trust you trusts you or suddenly will make eye contact with you and mm -hmm. and then I think there's the hard times where you just want to sit and tell them you know you're now safe and we're not going to do wrong by you and it's it is it's I've been there nine years and it never never ceases to amaze me and uh, one case we just had this summer was a uh, copper this big hound dog uh, and I walked into our trauma hospital at the Arizona Humane Society and there he was laying on the floor as a team of three were treating him. He had been stabbed three times oh. by his owner. Uh, he was bloated, he was soaked in blood um, and even you know after nine years I was just flabbergasted that this could happen and he initially had some paralysis um, and our team just worked. They found he had three, um, about one and 1.5 centimeter lacerations to his neck and torso. Uh, and again, that paralysis and within a month he was he was well enough to be adopted oh, and love the story and those are the stories and seeing the before and after you know I kind of said to copper I said you you paved the way for this legislation it's these 12,000 pets we treat in our trauma hospital that made us work four years to get this passed and now to see that Phoenix is really leading the way uh, I think it's going to mean so much for the pets in our community and again thank you for all of your support oh. It's the best job you could have, <laughs> I'll tell you. Because there's so much community support. Absolutely. And, um, people can really get engaged. But do you look for volunteers? We do, we do. So uh, we have such a robust operation. You've been to our facility and seen I all the I try to work. be careful because it's <laughs> you hard too. to go home with. <laughs> empty hands. <laughs> yes, it is very hard, but uh, you know, Sunny Slope Campus has been there since 1957. We use every square inch possible with our trauma hospital, our intensive care units, spay neuter uh, services, and then of course we have our uh, South Mountain Campus for Compassion facility. Uh, so yeah, we are doing everything, you know, treating the Valley's sick, injured, and abused homeless animals. That's really our role in the community. And then of course, keeping pets in homes with their owners through our Pet Resource Center. Uh, that team fields about 70,000 calls a year. And oh these gosh. are pet owners that just need um, anything from pet friendly housing tips to d low cost dog food or low cost medical care, which they can also get through our veterinary clinics. Uh, so really keeping pets in homes with their owners, that's really the last thing owners want to do is give up their pets. But from a volunteer perspective, I mean, there's so many opportunities to, to work with these guys, to socialize cats, um, little baby kittens in our kitten nursery that, that don't have moms that need care. Uh, you can go out on events with us or we have big adoption uh, events each year. So yes, volunteering, um, you can get that information at each humane.org and then fostering. Fostering pets is something um, we always need help with in caring for the sick and injured. Our foster team last year um, put about 4,200 pets into foster homes wow. in addition uh, to all of the pets that come into our shelter. So our foster program is about the size of another shelter. So we're very proud of it. Uh, you get a lot of support. We pay all the medical. We can give you the food, uh, everything you need. But yes, there's, there's always help that we can use. That's great. And is there a number? I mean, yeah. it's online. Yep, everything is at easyhumane.org slash volunteer or slash foster, but then our pet resource center is 602-997-7585, extension 3800. And again, that team is seven days a week. Uh, they are customer experience agents that are just gonna talk you through whatever help it is that you need for your pet. Great, I'm glad yeah. you said that. You yeah. know, uh, I know that you partner with all the other cities in the Valley and, yes. and with agencies. Um, I am really 
strongly push senior dogs for seniors? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so November is a National Adopt a Senior Pet Month, and I can't tell you enough how amazing senior pets are. I mean, what you see is what you get with a senior pet. So puppies and kittens are great, but they are gonna get adopted much quicker than some of our senior pets. And really with seniors, you can bring them home and they tend to settle in really well. Uh, so it's more of a just a quicker transition. Um, but there are so many benefits, whether you're a senior citizen or not, just to having pets. And they lower our stress levels, our blood pressure. Uh, you know, they make us laugh. They may help get seniors out and about. So going on walks and meeting new people and relieving any sense of loneliness that might come, um, you know, if you, as you become an empty nester or what mm -hmm. have you. So yeah, we're really encouraging people in the month of November to adopt a senior pet. We'll be having some senior pet specials uh, going on as well. Uh, so yeah, I just would not overlook them. I took home a senior pet uh, years ago and she had another six years and just brought so much joy to our, our family um, and our hearts. So I hope people really give those seniors a chance. Well, I am looking for a senior golden lab, so just keep that <laughs> yeah, in you mind. You come to the right place. <laughs> you know the right people. <laughs> so yeah, my daughter's most insisted, but um, we have a German Shepherd and a Cocker, and the German Shepherd's just three and still very rambunctious. Yes. The Cocker is laid back and gets very aggravated with the Shepherd. <laughs> right. Uh, but we think we can... Yeah place a new one in, in there between. Absolutely. So we're all excited. So. Oh, wonderful. We'll and the holidays are coming up, and I always want to make a plug. It's not a good time to give a gift as a cat or a dog. So what we tell people is, you know, just make sure you know your recipient. Um, if you know the person that's wanting the pet, just know, do they have any allergies? What type of pet is it that they're looking for? You know, what are the considerations as far as time or finances? Um, and provided you know those things, you can come into the Arizona Humane Society. We have matchmakers that can uh, help you find a pet. If for some reason an adoption doesn't work out, um, we can we, take back. <laughs> yeah. Um, if for some reason it doesn't work out, we have a 100% adoption guarantee. Oh. So what that means is after a week it doesn't work out or a year it doesn't work out, you just call our pet resource center, we make an appointment, we take that pet back in, um, and you know, at least you gave it a try. We just want to make sure the pet comes back to us um, if you can't rehome them yourselves. Uh, there's also staycation opportunities, so you could take a pet for three night overnight stay, test the waters that way, and then decide after three nights whether it's a fit or not. So, um, you know, we, we wanna work with people. We'd rather they come to us than the pet stores. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily don't get a pet as a gift, but we can help you do that. Um, and we can find ways to make that work for your family. Um, and then of course, with the holidays, just be sure that you're kind of keeping all the holiday things away from your furry friends, because they tend to get into the Christmas decorations and the tinsel and, and things like that, you know, the, the treats, the dark chocolate and things that can be, um, <laughs> can be toxic to them. So, and they can just be plain lazy like this guy here. Uh, no. Well, thank you. thank you so much for yeah. all you do and uh, please share with your fellow employees and Dr. Yeah. Hanson how great you are and how much appreciated you are. So well, thank, thank you. you. We, get, we have the same uh, feelings towards you and we appreciate all that you do in the city, so thank you. That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please call my office at 602-262-7444 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district1. We'll see you next time on the Issues.